من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما When the Prophet sallallahu left Mecca, the Muslims that came with him were just near 100. They migrated with him when the state of Islam was established in Medina, and they left the oppression they faced from the Quraysh. This vile and this brutal oppression. Oppression that the Muslims could not fight back against until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to by means of a state. When these 100 or so people migrated, there were still those who remained in Mecca and continued to face persecution and torture at the hands of the Quraysh. After the Muslims finally established a state, there were still these people who were suffering. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the ayah from Surah Nisa in translation, And what is it with you? You do not fight in the cause of Allah and for oppressed men, women, and children who cry out, Our Lord, deliver us from this land of oppressors. Appoint for us a savior. Appoint for us a helper. all by your grace. What is wrong with you that you do not fight for the oppressed men, the oppressed women, and the oppressed children, the oppressed who cry out to Allah to bring them out of this land of torture, of persecution, the oppressed who cry to Allah for someone to take them out of their torture. It has been over one year. It has been 377 days. It has been 53 weeks. It has been over a year since the genocide began in Gaza. We began by counting by days. And now you're counting by years. We're a week away from counting by a year and some months. Over an entire year filled with the assault carried out on our brothers and our sisters in Palestine. An entire year where the oppressed men, the oppressed women, and the oppressed children cry out to Allah, begging Him to remove their oppression and bring the Muslims to save them. 377 days. A full calendar year. A year where the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is facing brutality at every turn, and no one is helping them. No one is removing their pain. The illegal Zionist entity has not been held to account for any of its actions. What has happened since October 7th? They have lied to the world, and the world has chosen to support their lies. Their lies of beheaded babies, their lies of raped women, their lied, they lied about targeting soldiers in Gaza when they targeted civilians. They lied about safe zones and they carpet bombed routes out. They lie and they lie and they lie. And the nations of this earth, the kuffar who walk on Allah's earth, they have aided and they have cooperated with these lies that kill our brothers and our sisters. These lies have resulted in Hind Rajab dying in her car, surrounded by her dead family and troops coming closer. In Wadiya being stabbed to death by his landlord. In Sidra, Sidra being murdered by a bomb dropping right in front of her. In Saida's neck being slit by a white supremacist in Detroit. How have we allowed this to happen? How has the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed this to happen? How do we live in a situation where billions of dollars are sent to the Zionist entity? Billions of dollars of the believers are, are sent to build these weapons, to ship these weapons, to put these weapons in the hands of the Zionists. These are the real terrorists. Those who kill blindly men, women, and children. And the leaders of our ummah, they watch blindly. The leaders of our ummah were not always blind. The leaders of our ummah, when they feared Allah and the judgment that would come to them, they led Islam to fill this world with justice and with peace. During the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the grandson of Umar ibn al-Khattab, the ummah prospered with wealth. Wealth to the degree that every Muslim in the ummah had their fill. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz would put food for the birds atop the mountains so that when he would be held accountable in front of Allah, he could say that he fed all that was within his ummah. This was justice. During the Khilafah of Mu'tasim, a woman was traveling in the Byzantine-controlled region of modern-day Turkey. The Byzantines mistreated her and she cried out for the Caliph. She cried out for the justice of Islam. When Mu'tasim heard of this injustice, when he heard of her cries, he sent an army for her. An army so large that by the time the first soldier reached her in Turkey, the last soldier hadn't left Baghdad. The caliph of the Ottoman Caliphate, 
Sultan Abdul Hamid II, he was approached by the founder of Zionism, in, by Theodore Herzl in 1901, 123 years ago. Herzl asked the Sultan for land to prop up the Zionist state in exchange for a sum of money. And Sultan Abdul Hamid II replied by saying, advise him not to take another step in this matter. I cannot sell even a handful of the soil of this land, for it does not belong to me, but to all the Islamic nation. The Islamic nation that fought for the sake of this land, and they have watered it with their blood. They may keep their money and their millions. But if the Islamic Caliphate is one they destroyed, then they will be able to take Palestine without a price. But while I am alive, I would rather push a sword into my body than see the land of Palestine cut and given away from the Caliphate. I will not start cutting our bodies while we are alive. It was under the banner of La ilaha illallah that Umar ibn al-Khattab liberated Palestine. It was under the banner of La ilaha illallah that Salahuddin returned Palestine to the Muslims. It was under the banner of La ilaha illallah that Mu'tasim sent an army to protect the honor of one Muslimah. Under the banner of La ilaha illallah that Sultan Abdul Hamid II refused to give away the heart of the Ummah. We have seen the leaders of the Muslim Ummah in the past stand and end evil with their hands. We have seen them provide the justice of Islam, never selling out for the gains of this world because they knew they would be judged. Their protection of the Ummah spanned every Muslim in every corner of this world. And where are we today? Where are we today? Where is the protection of this Ummah today? Where was this protection when a child dies in his car, stuck in a car for hours with her dead family? Where was this protection when a landlord stabbed a young boy, a six-year-old boy? Where is this protection of the Ummah across the planet? Since October 7th, there have been children born who only know war, who only know the humming of gunfire, the warring of drones, and the whistles of missile strikes. This is their reality. There have been children born who have been killed the next day. Fathers who buy clothes for their newborn children only for their children to be killed before they can get to the hospital. Women who are targeted and killed as soon as they give birth. Refugee camps, this quote unquote safe haven. They are strike zones. There have been over 40,000 confirmed murdered. The real number is much higher. There have been over 500 confirmed dead in the West Bank, and there have been over 1,000 killed in Lebanon with over a million displaced. Brothers, if you can move up, please. <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the drop of blood of a Muslim is worth more than the entirety of the Kaaba. How many Kaabas have we lost how many drops of blood flow in the streets? How many are oppressed today? Hospitals bombed, children killed, men and women raped, beheaded babies. Bombs so impactful that the blood and flesh of children bakes onto their bones from the inside out. Bodies of infants with half their torso ripped open. Their legs blown off. Bodies of sons and daughters of this ummah carried in bags by their siblings, carried by children to mass graves. Mass graves that fill tens of people at a time. There are no resources in Gaza. Surgeries are done on the floor with no anesthesia. Tools covered in blood, no way to clean them. There is a lack of water. Hundreds of thousands are displaced, practically waiting to die. The leaders of the Muslims have stood by with all this happening. Countries who have closed their borders, who allowed food and water to get to the regime, who allowed the weapons to travel through their trade routes. They have let the Zionists kill our brothers and our sisters. They have not moved an inch. They have failed the people of our Ummah. They have failed the people of Gaza. They have failed the people of Kashmir. They have failed the people of Syria. They have failed the people of Iraq. They have failed the people of Afghanistan. They have failed the oppressed Muslims of our Ummah. They have said that they do not care about the Palestinian issue. They have reduced it to a nationalistic issue instead of a Muslim issue. They have said, and I quote, do I personally care about the Palestinian issue? I don't. Is this the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is this the Ummah of Rasulullah? Is this the greatest Ummah to ever walk this earth? The Ummah that cannot lift a finger when it sees a child die in a car. That can't take a step towards a child who was stabbed 26 times, just 35 miles from here. The Ummah who was chained to the ground when real beheaded babies are shown to them. And why is it with you? You do not fight in the cause of Allah and for oppressed men, women, and children who cry out, Our Lord, deliver us from this land of oppressors. Appoint for us a savior. Appoint for us a helper. All by your grace. 
How many drops of blood will it take? How many dead will it take? How many fathers have to hold up their children in bags of rice? Saying, Alhamdulillah. How many women have to, hold, have to outlive their sons? How many children have to grow up without their parents? How many babies have to wake up crying? How many hufaz of this ummah have to burn to death in a hospital for this ummah to stand up? Burning to death with the eye face sticking out of him. The blood of one Muslim is worth more than the entirety of the Kaaba. Our blood flows in the streets like rivers. Oceans of blood. Oceans of blood of the oppressed men, women, and children of this ummah. What do we do? What have we done? What has the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said? There are people among our ummah. There are Muslims who say that the Palestinians brought it, brought it upon themselves. They say the fighting, the defensive fighting, the defensive fighting after decades of oppression should not have been done. They say that it brought harm to the ummah. They say to look at our state, to look at the bloodshed of the ummah. Instead of blaming the kuffar, instead of blaming the Zionists, instead of blaming the murderers and the evil men, they blame the Muslims. The brave Muslims who defended themselves, who defended the oppressed men, the oppressed women, and the oppressed children. They blame the ones who fought, and they say that they are the reasons for the blood being spilled. These Muslims say that the lives of Palestinians were the same as our lives before October 7th. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? For a second, imagine that. Our lives. Our lives where we can speak up about this. Where we can drive to our families' homes without checkpoints. Where we don't fear being gunned down or assaulted or carpet bombed. Can you imagine that saying our lives were the same as theirs? Even speaking up about this issue is seen as a crime by some nations. When Muslims go out to protest, their own governments are the ones who send them back home. To say that the Palestinians, to say that the Muslims brought it upon themselves is a statement of sickness in someone's heart. A vile sickness, a disease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure this disease from the hearts of the Muslims. And may he never allow us to think in such a way. Ameen. <clears throat> Brothers, can you please move up? Particularly the middle section. <clears throat> the Zionists lie and lie, but their greatest lie, their most transparent and their most laughable lie, is that they're strong, that they have any sort of strength. The Zionists are weak, they are afraid, they need the West to back them. They need the superpowers of this world to back them. They need propped up nation states to back them. Nation states created with the same four colors. They are nothing. Strength is not in a gun. Strength is not in a bomb or in a missile. Strength is not in numbers and it is not in treaties or in nations. So who is strong? Who has strength on this earth? Who has strength on this earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yunus, verse 62 to 64, in translation, There will be certainly no fear for the close servants of Allah, nor will they grieve. There are those who are mindful and faithful of Him. For them is good news in this worldly life and the hereafter. There is no change in the promise of Allah, and that is truly the ultimate triumph. Strength, my brothers and my sisters, strength comes from Allah. Even if the Ummah had nothing, and it doesn't, the Ummah itself is strong in a material means. But even if it wasn't, Allah is the one who brings strength, who gives strength, who gives victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who no gun, no bomb, no missile, no army, and no nation can stop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sent the angels to fight down alongside the Muslims in the Battle of Badr when they were outnumbered 10 to 3. And we have Allah on our side. So why do we fear for the realism of the solution? 
Why do we take a step back and say a solution that will fix the problems of the ummah, that will end the suffering, is unrealistic? Why do we say that the ummah would be crushed if it even thought of being united? We should not concern ourselves with how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will end the oppression of our brothers and our sisters, but rather concern ourselves with being on the right side and working towards lifting that oppression. Are we working towards a solution to remove the pain of our ummah? The ummah is showing up for the suffering Muslims in Gaza, but we need, to, we need to start standing up. When we are faced with this difficulty, we need to hold tight to the rope of Allah. We can't just bring awareness to the situation in Gaza. We can't just bring awareness to the illegitimacy of the Zionist state and the failures of the world to bring justice. We've done that for the past year. We've done that for the past 377 days. The situation in Gaza has gotten worse and it has seeped into Lebanon. We need to talk about the solution that will stop the death. We need to speak up about a solution that will bring the shield back to the ummah. The new ones that people elect, they are no different. They will enable the same policies. They have said themselves that if there was no Zionist state, that they would create one. That they are lifelong supporters of the Zionist state. The hands, their hands are filthy with the blood of our Muslim brothers and our sisters. The ink on their legislation is the blood of our children. They write with pens made of the bones of the Muslims. This system will not save Gaza. This system will not save the oppressed men, the oppressed women, and the oppressed children. Islam will. Not just Islam as a personal religion, but Islam as a way of life, as a comprehensive way of life, as a deen. A deen where our actions are in line with the Quran and the Sunnah. We need to call, we need to call for what will save our brothers and our sisters. Not placate the issue. Not things that will put a band-aid on the issue. Not throwing money at the issue without putting in the effort to remove injustice. Our ummah has bled and bled and bled. And our ummah has shown up. When the borders were closed in Palestine, soldiers went across these closed borders and helped the oppressed Muslims. The ummah across the world stands up and protests, calling for unity. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whosoever of you sees an evil, let him change it with his hand. And if he is not able to do so, and let him change it with his tongue. And if he is not able to do so, then with, with his heart. And that is the weakest of faith. We are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We are the ummah of Rasulullah. We are the greatest ummah to ever walk this earth. The ummah that, that does not let the death of tens of thousands go by. The ummah that does not let the death of a single child go without account. The ummah that does not let a single drop of blood of a Muslim go without justice. Brothers, please move up in the back, specifically. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The parable of the believers in their affection, mercy, and compassion towards each other is that of a body. When any limb aches, the whole body reacts with sleeplessness and fever. The ummah is awake. The ummah is restless. The ummah is not lost, nor is, the ummah, is, is this the ummah's fault that it's happening. There's a fear that speaking up about this, that calling for the real and the practical solution will lead to people losing their jobs, losing out in this dunya. Firstly, when someone gives something up for the sake of Allah, they will never lose. They will only be winners. Secondly, our risk is written. What is meant for us will always reach us, no matter what. Thirdly, speaking out, being, out, being on the right side, calling for the Islamic solution will not remove our gains in this world. It will only increase us in ranks to Allah. We can donate, we can bring awareness, but imagine the sight on Yom Al-Qiyamah. Imagine being in front of Allah and He asks us what we did. And we get the honor to say, Ya Allah, I donated. Ya Allah, I talked about this issue. And Ya Allah, I sought the solution. I spoke for the solution. I furthered your deen, Ya Allah. I helped my brothers and my sisters when they were suffering. This is an honor. Possibly losing out on this dunya is an honor if it's for the sake of Allah, the one who can make anything happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we will be tested with fear, with famine, with loss of property, crops, and life. But we have glad tidings for patiently enduring. We have glad tidings for working for the deen of Allah and not succumbing to the weight of this dunya. Do not think for a moment that our voices are small, that they're weak. Our voices are loud. Us saying, La ilaha illallah, echoes across this earth. 
When Rasulullah وسلم, went to the people of Makkah and he told them to say, La ilaha illallah, they rejected him. Why? Because they knew this statement, this shahada, was not just a statement of personal belief, it was a statement that said, all justice, all legislation belongs to Allah. That He is supreme and He is the one who brings all matters about. Once we understand this, that the promise of Allah is true, that all legislation is from Him, even whispering La ilaha illallah is louder than the thunder in the dead of night. It is louder than any bullet, louder than any bomb, louder than any missile, than the marching of any army and the waving of any flag. Any flag that is meant to divide the Muslims. Do not let people bring you down. Do not let the suffering of the Ummah make you lose hope. Our fathers and our mothers in Gaza, our brothers, our sisters, and our children in Gaza, they have Jannah. They have Jannah. The only barrier between them and gardens beneath which rivers flow is death. We are not promised this Jannah. We need to work for it. And it is our responsibility to make sure that we work for this. The Ummah will be united one day. The Ummah will live under the, under the justice of Islam one day. The banner of La ilaha illallah will wave one day. We have to work for this Islam. We have to work for the flag to wave. We have to work for this Ummah to unite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Asa, in translation, those who leave their homes and die while emigrating to Allah and His Messenger, their reward has already been secured with Allah. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. The promise of Allah is true. To achieve this, we need to work in the cause of Allah for the oppressed men for the oppressed women, or for the oppressed children who cry out to Allah, our Lord, deliver us from this land of oppressors. Appoint for us a savior. Appoint for us a helper. All by your grace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lift the oppression of our brothers and our sisters in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lift the, lift the pain of our ummah across this planet. May he unify our ummah. May he use us to further his deen and to call for the correct solution. May he make his justice prevail over this earth. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'amru bil adli wal ihsan, wa ita ilil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi, ya idhukum la adhukum tathakaroon, uthkuru Allah ya thkurukum, mashkuruhu ya zidkum, wa staghfiruhu ya khfirlukum, wa attakuhu ya jakallukum min amnukum makhrajan wa qimu salah.